Just over a year ago, Musk bought Twitter for about $44 billion. Uh, you know, we just revalued the company at less than half of uh, the acquisition price. Did you really? Now he's using his uh, very specific set of business skills. What I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. To speed run, taking that to zero. You see, his new CEO was like, um, advertisers are basically 100% of our revenue. Uh, so we should try and get them to spend more money on Twitter. To help develop Twitter into a place where they will be excited about investing more money. Product development, yeah. ad safety, sure. content moderation. Musk decided to go in um, a different direction. Today is your introduction to the advertising community. I don't want to advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? Today is your introduction. If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. You are a ass. You've killed us. Go fuck yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. This is it. This is the sign. Yeah, it's a sign, all right. Going out of business. It's going to take a certain level of genius to spend $40 billion on a company that makes 90% of its revenue from advertising. Twitter, the X, is basically an ad sales company and it's now led by a guy telling people to not only not advertise on X, but if you stopped advertising, you can GFY. This all stems because he tweeted out some delusional nonsense about how uh, historically discriminated against religion with less members than the Mormons was actually running some secret plot to get rid of white people. Which was a hard no from basically all of his mainstream advertisers. At which point, he tells them to get stuffed. Seems like Musk has got this far without understanding the uh, basic concepts of the rules of business. The 57th rule of acquisition. Good customers are as rare as latinum. Treasure them. You know, if a certain group of people are going to be some 90% of your business, you might at least Try to fake that you like them. Rick, have you ever heard the expression, the customer is always right? Yeah. That's not our policy. That's how I feel. Don't about, advertise. How do you think then about the economics of, of X? Nah. <laughs> I say let it die, let it die, let it die, let it shrivel up and come on. Now the interviewer thinks that Musk's got some great plan here about shifting where X gets its money from. If part of the underlying model, at least today, and maybe it needs to shift, maybe the answer is it needs to shift away from advertising. Um, if, if you believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who... But no, Musk is adamant that he doesn't want people to advertise the thing that brings in 90% of his business. Musk's business plan is basically... Let it all die. If, if you believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who uh, have this view, G what do you do? F Y. I, I, I understand that, but there's a reality too. <laughs> And it's quite interesting watching Musk so amused by his great sense of humour until the interviewer points out, actually, are you aware that you've just kind of announced that you're um, committing corporate suicide there? Right? Yes. No, no. It, it, I, I mean, Linda no, Yaccarino's right here and she's got to sell advertising. I, I, absolutely. So, um, no, no, totally. So, so what, no, no, actually, what... what I got stressed. This wasn't some great setup gotcha question. This is just like... The most obvious question, which shifts Musk from this. G what do you do? F Y. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too. <laughs> to this, I'll advertise. Uh, absolutely. So, um, no, no, totally. So, so, what, no, no. Actually, what, what? It's basically this. G what do you do? F. -Y. 
Godspeed, Spider-Man. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too. <laughs> oh. Leading to the most obvious conclusion ever. What what this advertising boycott is uh, is, is going to do? It's it's going to kill the company. And your exit strategy was telling them to um, get bent. I know what I'm doing, Crichton. We attack tomorrow under cover of daylight. <laughs> you change from maybe the company dies to guaranteeing it dies. Daylight, sir. It's the last thing they'll be expecting. A daylight charge over the minefield. But what field? <laughs> this is it. This is the sign. Look, it's less than six months that I put up a video predicting that Elon Musk, who at the time was the richest man in the world, would be bankrupt within five years. Seems like Musk saw that video and said, uh, hold my beer, I can speed run that. And you think that the... Uh, I, but, and the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company and we will document it in great detail. Wow, now that's a 5D chess move if ever I saw one. How do you want to be remembered in history? Alongside the Wright brothers, Elon Musk, Zephyrin Cochran? Musk's plan was basically to buy the something teenth the most popular social media company and bankrupt it in just over a year so he could claim victory in that the advertisers he told not to advertise and GFY didn't. So he wins. But he's going to document it because now really so many people are going to be sorry when Twitter goes. <laughs> Hell, Musk once tweeted that Facebook was lame and should be deleted. Well, gosh, it was so nice of him to get the ball rolling with Twitter. But there are those advertisers, I imagine, are going to say, they're going to say, we didn't kill the company. Oh, yeah. They're going to say, tell it, to, tell it to Earth. And they told it to Earth. And Earth said, um, Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, everything that we'll, we'll both make our cases. Right. And we'll see what the outcome is. But you just said you knew what the outcome was. It's, it's going to do it. It's, it's going to kill the company. What are the economics of that for you? I mean, you, you have enormous resources, so you can actually keep this company going for a very long time. Would you keep it going for a long time if there was no advertising? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Looks like someone doesn't understand that Elon Musk is only the richest man in the world on paper. It's easier if you understand how Sam Bankman Free did it. But the basics are, if I create a billion tokens or shares in a company called Magical Thinking Inc. Or I'm very confident that uh, full self-driving will be ready this time next year and it'll make our company worth a hundred times what it is now. Uh, incorporated or whatever. And I sell one of those tokens for a dollar. Does this now mean that I am a billionaire? This little accounting trick is basically how Musk probably appears about 10 times richer than he actually is. And buying Twitter probably almost broke him financially. I mean, let me just ask you the simple question. Why would the richest man in the world, who if he really did own 200 odd billion dollars, need to uh, borrow, borrow 10 billion dollars at some stupid interest rate to buy Twitter? And why would he need to... Uh, borrow a billion dollars from SpaceX, which in all likelihood was from a NASA grant to get people to the moon or other investor cash. Basically, Musk can't afford to keep pumping money into Twitter. I mean, if the company fails because of an adver advertiser boycott, it will fail because of an adver advertiser boycott. And that will be what bankrupted the company. And that's what all, everybody on Earth will know. Thing is, of the 40 or so billion he bought Twitter with, only about half was actually must cash. Some 10 odd billion was a loan from the bank, and the rest came from other private investors who probably had their jaws on the floor at this moment as Musk is happily setting fire to their cash. But, but you recognize that some of those people are going to say, that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform. And the poor interviewer is still there trying to explain business 101 to Elon Musk. And I, I, wonder, I just wonder and ask you and think about that for Tell a second. Tell it to the judge. But the, but the judge is going to be... Uh, the judge is the public. Sunshine, lollipops and rainbows, everything that... 
and you think that the public is going to say that, that Disney is making a mistake? Yes. And they're going to boycott Disney? They already are. My God, I thought what was going to take Disney down was things like uh, superhero fatigue and massive bombs like the Marvels. But no, what's really going to take Disney down was the massive leverage power of people who don't like that Disney pulled their advertising from the uh, from the something teenth most popular social media site. And it won't just be Disney that Musk takes down with his uh, corporate murder-suicide pact. It'll be Apple. IBM, Comcast, Universal, Lionsgate, Warner Brothers, and Paramount. <laughs> no, I mean, Musk's strategy here is bulletproof. I mean, it's not like there's anywhere else these advertisers could go to advertise this stuff. Right? Meanwhile, later in the interview, Musk all of a sudden seems to understand that um, if you make a product that consumers don't want to use, then... Um, you're going to go bankrupt. I mean, I think at the end of the day, if we make bad products that people don't want to use, then the users will vote with their resources and use something else. Yeah, if only Musk understood that um, in the business he's in, the advertisers are the customers. But maybe just a quick recap of how Musk came to this. We dug our own grave with X moment. At first, he said he wanted to buy Twitter and made them an offer that was ludicrously too good to be true. Also, he could make a 420 joke and legally committed to doing it. And of course, there was lots of showboating that it was nothing to do with money. It was just about free speech. It, this is not about the economics. It, it's for the, the, the moral good that you think it will achieve. You're, you've described yourself, Elon, as a free speech absolutist. Important to the fun function of democracy, it's important to the function of the United States. But you've, um, you've described I, yourself. I, I don't care about the economics at all. The thing is, those sorts of free speech forums already exist in things like 4chan or 8chan. Those free speech forums are sufficiently toxic that no reputable advertiser wants to go anywhere near them, let alone spend big money there. If Musk really wanted a free speech absolutist platform, he could have bought one for a millionth of the price of Twitter. But instead, he bought one for billions of dollars simply so he could make the shocking discovery that no one could have seen coming. That if you made the platform that was 90% dependent on advertising so toxic that the advertisers left, then the platform would be worth as much as the other free speech absolutist platforms that already exist. They've also seen their share of free speech absolutist debates. It typically is something like this. The free speech absolutist virtuously says that people should be able to post anything and there should be no pull clutching or people being offended. Well, it turns out there's always some pretty sick puppies out there and at some point everyone ends up clutching their pearls and being offended. Even if it's not actually illegal, let's say, for instance, oh, artistic impressions of unnecessary cruelty to cute, fluffy animals. Who would want to do such a thing? Well, I don't know. But I can tell you where people who would do that sort of thing would want to aggregate. Obviously around a place where you can post that sort of thing. The simple reality is the more free the platform, the more toxic elements it will contain. Thing is that platforms that are defined by that sort of thing or debates about that sort of thing aren't where people who want to sell their products to uh, normal people want to advertise their stuff because they don't want their stuff associated with that. Basically, you can have a free speech absolutist platform or advertisers, but not both. The obvious simple business reality is there is a balance of two factors. You want a forum open enough that most people don't feel uncomfortable using it. And you have to balance that with one where most advertisers find it reputable enough that they're not uncomfortable advertising on it. And boom, that is the exact formula of basically every successful social media business. It's kind of like Musk is finally working out that maybe Twitter wasn't the way it was because of liberal bias, but because that's the way it had to be if it needed to get ad revenue. And it's the reason why things like YouTube are a successful business, but the chans ain't. But Musk's brain apparently can't handle an equation with more than one term in it. And if you introduce 
any censorship whatsoever. It's a slippery slope to everyone being censored. And, and, and as soon as you sort of, you know, throw in the towel and concede to censorship, it is only a matter of time before someone censors you. Well, if that really was true, then it's only a matter of time before Musk censors you because he's, he's taken all sorts of people off of Twitter. Uh, and freedom of speech, you have to say, when is it relevant? It's only relevant when, when someone you don't like can say something you don't like or it, ha it has no meaning. Um, and so committed was Musk to this free speech on his free speech platform that he said his employees could, uh, nah, they're all required to sign non-disclosure agreements. And then he demanded that they sign a pledge that if they violated them, you know. Uh, it's only relevant when, when someone you don't like can say something you don't like, or it, ha it has no meaning. A few people at our company continue to act in a manner contradictory to the company's interests and in violation of their non-disclosure agreements. Non-disclosure agreements? That's odd. I, I thought sunlight was the best disinfectant here. I can't quite imagine, can't quite remember where I heard that, Elon. This will be said once if you clearly and deliberately violate the non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> Sorry, that should be the anti-free speech agreement that you signed when you joined. You accept liability to the full extent of the law and Twitter will immediately seek damages. Because, you know, that's how free speech absolutism rolls. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. F them. Okay? Anyway, so after all that posturing about doing it for free speech, and his free speech absolutism. Uh, he spent months trying to back out. Apparently, it was all about the money, and he didn't really care that much about um, free speech. And Twitter said, no backsies, it's in the contract. And Musk posted a load of memes disparaging Twitter, only to fold like Superman on laundry day when the case went to court, because he knew he would lose. But of course, Musk turned this into a great victory because um, they said they didn't want him to buy Twitter in the first place, so he won! <laughs> yes, and, and, then, and, and, and then they said, no, you must buy us, gun to the head, you have to buy us. I'm like, are you the same people who said you'd rather die than, than be bored? Yes, wow, Elon, you made them an offer that was ludicrously too good to be true. And now you can laugh that they didn't want to sell it to you in the first place. And all it cost you was $44 billion. Uh, you know, we just revalued the company at less than half of... Oh. Yeah, Elon, you really got the last laugh in there, didn't you? Doesn't that seem odd? So... I guess my dad, I guess my dad. <laughs> and this was after all Musk's declaration that we will never surrender or settle an unjust case against us, even if we will probably lose. Yeah, Musk was virtue signaling how pious he was while possessing none of those properties. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing... Bottom line, Musk had to buy the company, paying way over the odds, whilst he had posted a load of memes saying how the company was crap. But hey, this is Elon Musk. This guy does his research and knows his facts. We've been friends for 16 years. Um, and I promised you I'd be here, and that's why I'm here. And, and, and Jonathan, like, the only reason I'm here is because you are a friend. Like, what was my speaking fee? You, you're not making was, any... Hey, first first exactly. of all, I'm Andrew, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's okay. Now, he couldn't just buy it on his own, of course. Turns out he didn't technically have the money to do that. So you'd, you'd like them to come, come with you in, in, in the... Yeah, but it's, it's... I mean... I mean, I could technically afford it. Um, and the second largest investor in the purchase was, was these freedom-loving folks. You know, the ones he spent the World Cup with. It's people who care about looking good while doing evil. And, of course, he had to borrow some ten-odd billion dollars, meaning that he now has to pay a billion or so dollars of interest per year. Spoiler, that's never going to happen. I mean, maybe it's possible to think of a dumber way Musk could have handled this. Uh, but I can't think of one.
Now, some while ago, Twitter got sued over impersonation stuff, so they implemented a blue checkmark system to basically protect themselves from getting sued again. And this was the first thing that Musk got rid of, replacing a blue check that said that the person was who they said they were, and they changed it such that afterwards it conveyed the extremely useful information that this person gave Elon Musk $8 a month. This isn't about power and money. Musk is doing it to save free speech. And sometimes that free speech ain't cheap. I mean, uh, for companies, it's $1,000 a month to um, um, register for free speech. It's not an overstatement to say it could be the single most important development for free speech in the modern history of the United States. Were you, but were you throttling the New York Times relative to other news organizations, relative to everybody else? Was it, was it, was it specific to the, to the Times? It, they didn't buy a subscription. Uh, by the way, it only costs like $1,000 a month, so... And um, uh, be protected from impersonation on Twitter. Yes, this is Musk encouraging people to, uh, for the low, low price of $1,000 a month, to um, uh, register to fight impersonations somehow for free speech. Bizarre. I would have thought that if you allowed people to impersonate people on Twitter and didn't shut it down, that would kind of be a, a liability for the company. You know, something the company might have been sued for in the past, and a reason why they would have created something like, I don't know, a, a check mark of some sort for people to identify who was who they said they were. <laughs> you know what would be really stupid? Would be if someone came along and abolished the system that protected Twitter from the liability and stated that they would start a, a new program that would allow the activity that got Twitter sued in the first place if they didn't pay Twitter $1,000 a month. That's some 5D chess there. Any organization that refuses to buy a subscription uh, is, is, is not going to be recommended. But then what does that say about free speech? And what does well, that say about like a amplifying free speech is not certain exactly voices? Free. It costs a little bit. Uh, by the way, it only costs like $1,000 a month. So. Yeah, yeah, of course, only $1,000 a month for uh, free speech. And now he's suing the lawyers who... Um, forced him to uh, def defend democracy and um, free speech? I mean, I'm no expert on this, but doesn't that mean that he didn't actually want to defend democracy or free speech? He had to be forced to do it. Right. Did you do that because you thought that a court would make you do that? Yes. Then because he loved uh, free speech so much, he made it such that only people who gave him $8 a month would appear at the top of everyone's feed. It would be over time that the... The verified users will be will pretty much always be at the top of of comments and so you have to scroll far to see the unverified uh, users. Congratulations, Elon! You've reinvented shadow banning. Except not just for one or two people, but for the 99.9% .9 of the people on the platform who aren't Elon Musk fans. Curiously, shadow banning the 99.9% .9 didn't increase the uh, user experience of that 99.9% .9 of Twitter users. Musk also fired two-thirds of the staff. That meant they were basically limited in their ability to shut down people impersonating others, leading to some very high-profile impersonations, wiping billions of dollars off the stock value of companies. He also went out of his way to make sure that advertisers knew that the new Twitter would be as exactly as censorious and safe as old Twitter. This is despite us doing everything possible to appease them. Um, and to make it clear that moderation rules and hateful conduct rules have not changed. <laughs> wow, it's almost like a year ago, Elon Musk could easily be blackmailed for money into making Twitter a safe space for advertisers. Uh, and we're continuing to enforce them. Um, and when people pushed X to doubt because he had just fired... So, so today we fired uh, half of, of uh, Twitter. He offered a thermonuclear name and shame for anyone who dared stop advertising. And this wasn't now. This was a year ago. Then some of the financial realities started hitting home. So he appointed a World Economic Forum advertising boss to give the advertisers a familiar face. And, and obviously supporting many, many important groups. But it really made a very public statement that... We're going to put our money where our mouth is. That was confronting editorial bias and saying, 
my division, our news division, the biggest news division in the country is going to be 50% women and 50% people of color. Ambitious yeah. goals? Yes, no doubt about it. But a statement, a stake in the ground with accountability. And I'm happy to say there's many, many other uh, uh, examples of progress at, at our company, divisions like mine, working with ad color. He then took one of the most recognizable brands in history and rebranded it to X, making it hard to spot on the browser tab from all those X's to close tabs. Or maybe just a porn site. Yeah, could be either one. So now Mask's greatest fans can explain to their wives why they're paying $8 a month to a X.com probably halving the company's value overnight, and went on to claim that it was going to take over half of the world's financial system. If, if done right, the X would be would, would serve people's financial needs to such a degree that over time it would become, I don't know, maybe half of the global financial system. Or some big number. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what the number is, but pretty big. Um, Gosh, if only Musk had done the whole turn X into a bank that controlled half of the world's finances first, that's about $50,000 billion per year. He might not have to sweat it over a billion or so dollars of advertisers fleeing from toxic Twitter and bankrupting the company. Same really, because now I guess we'll never know if his genius strategy of getting an advertising specialist to create a $50,000 billion banking app would have worked out. The biggest news division in the country is going to be 50% women and 50% people of color. Ambitious yeah. goals? Yes, no doubt about it. Actually, even if they did succeed in getting a banking app, I'm skeptical about how many people would trust their money to a company that doesn't even pay its rent. Then the equivalent of adpocalypse hit Twitter. And Apocalypse on YouTube was basically when a load of advertisers found their adverts playing next to things that they wanted nothing to do with and started pulling their ads. And YouTube did the uh, responsible business thing, which was, you know, for a company that relies almost exclusively on ads to pay its bills. And they made real efforts to clean up their act and reassure the advertisers and so forth. And a few months later, it was back to business as normal. Space Karen's response was a little different. Go yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. He basically announced that Twitter is going bankrupt. I guess so he can claim that bankrupting Twitter was some great master plan of his to uh, save free speech. Uh, a masterful gambit, sir. Masterful gambit. Yeah, that original prediction that it's only five years till Musk becomes internally famous as the guy responsible for the greatest destruction of wealth in history. Seems kind of conservative now. Anyway, that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe drop a thumbs up on it. And if you really enjoyed it, as ever, you can support this channel through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.